Is a cheap fare going to be enough to convince the flying public to fly? I think certainly some people will be drawn back in by that, but I think not enough to make the industry profitable as a whole. I think if you look at a number of different polls and surveys, I think it's somewhere around at least 40% of uh, individuals don't really see themselves flying for the remainder of this year, as long as the pandemic's still some kind of risk. And uh, you add to that that business travel, uh, according to Delta's announcements today, is see no meaningful recovery. I think uh, we're going to be in a price war for quite a while, is my opinion. Who does a price war hurt the most? I mean, there had been a thinking during this pandemic that the airlines that, that go point to point um, would fare better, sort of the more local airlines as opposed to airlines that operate in a hub and spoke model where you have to actually transfer and there might be more friction involved in going to the airport and, and getting to the final destination. Um, you say that's that's not true. So is a price war going to sort of eliminate eliminate that? Well, I think that there's certainly some truth to what you're saying, that there are some savings in operating costs there. But I don't think uh, the shift down in pricing is fully appreciated for some of the lower cost airlines yet. So just to give you an idea, uh, in May, I think uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics showed that airfares for the U.S. were down around 29 percent year over year. And even as we got into June and you saw leisure demand, leisure travel start to recover, the pricing was still down 27 percent year over year. And that's about 30% worse than the consumer price index in general. So I think if you look at what that's going to do to operating earnings, even if you're doing point to point travel or hub and spoke, then you add on to that how much more interest costs has been put in here. Mm -hmm. And then the share, share count dilution from these big equity raises that most of the airlines have done. I think in a lot of cases, earnings per share even if you get out to a, a more normalized demand level, where we are with pricing, with new debt, and with new equity, I think the earnings per share are probably going to disappoint in a lot of cases. Do you think ultimately there will be bankruptcies in this industry? I really can't make a high conviction call on that right now because we're seeing some pretty unprecedented stuff coming from government support. Can, you make, a, can much, you make a high conviction call that there won't be? Uh, you know, if you put me against the wall, I would say a year from now, we'll probably see at least one airline having talked about or talking about restructuring. Because I think the, the demand recovery is going to take longer than it is currently being expected by the market. That's my opinion. So... You're going to have a lot of competitors who are able to stick around a lot longer than they normally would mm -hmm. because of all this government support, because the debt markets and the equity markets have been so friendly. Right. They've got pretty cash-rich airlines all of a sudden who aren't making any money, but they've got enough cash to keep battling it out yeah. with airfares down 30%. So. It's going to take a while, but sure. I think eventually, yeah, somebody, somebody's going to have to Colin, probably. Colin, we got to go. Thanks so much for your time. Colin Scarola, Thanks a lot for having me.